So I've seen all the cool videos with the giant ship battles, explosions, massive conflicts, and you think by yourself, I want a piece of that. But then, you get Solaris, you built yourself a big fleet, and as soon as you undock, you've bankrupted your entire empire, and you've also destroyed your entire fleet maintenance budget by going over your fleet capacity by about, oh, I don't know, 200%. So what is the best source of fleet capacity? Well, I did a little poll a while back and I found out that most of you voted for anchorages over fortress habitats, with a few weirdos mentioning warrior culture or megacorp liaison offices for some reason. But 15,000 of you voted on this, so I thought by myself, why not make a good video on this? Let's find out what is the best way of getting bang for your buck when it comes to naval capacity investment. Are Anchorage is the best? Are Fortress Habitats the winner? Or is some other source gonna come out of left field and basically say, hey, I'm better than all of them? But with that in mind, it's time for a shed update. The roof has come off, which of course was immediately followed by a rainstorm that drenched this husk of a structure. Now, it does look like something that was abandoned in the Rust Belt somewhere outside of Pittsburgh, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty bad at the moment. However, progress is progress, and with a bit of luck, I'll be able to get enough funds to place a new shed there in the near future. Because every man, woman, and child needs a place where they can work on their projects and also store the saddest toolbox in Safe existence. A 10 forward for the soul, if you will. Speaking of 10 forward, this video and an extension of my new shed is made possible by Star Trek Fleet Command. For those of you who are not aware, Star Trek Fleet Command is a mobile 4X MMO based around you guessed at the Star Trek franchise, and I don't just mean the original series or the next generation, no, the entire Star Trek franchise. Anyway, the game is free to play, it's open world, which means there's always new places to discover and investigate. There's also ship collection in the game, which you can then apply to whatever task. Sometimes you need a the Deridax Warbird, others a Galaxy Class. The game really does keep you busy as there is just so much stuff to do, missions, crew management, etc. Plus, they recently added content to follow up on Picard Season 3, which gives you an absolute ton of extra stuff to play with, and apparently they also added the Titan from the show, even though uh, we're not really going to go into detail what happens to that beauty. Plus, my personal favorite, the Defiant, was added recently too, which is pretty darn awesome. If all of this sounds good, then feel free to use the link in the video description description below to download Star Trek Fleet Command and if you don't have an Amazon App Store account yet then maybe it's a good time to go and download it as you get up to 20% off on purchases in Star Trek Fleet Command as well as other games on that particular platform if of course you decide to pull the trigger. Cool, I can now almost afford a shed. Speaking of sheds, they're expensive, and so is the generation of fleet capacity. Now, for the sake of this little exercise, we're going to boil down the total cost to alloys per naval cap. Why? Because ships are made out of alloys, and it's probably the most consistent thing that we can apply to this particular scenario. How do we do this? Well, we use conversion rates, of course. Any building that generates naval cap will have their cost calculated from minerals to alloys. That is a conversion of two to one, meaning that if a building costs 500 minerals, the alloy cost is going to be converted to 250. If you're wondering where I get these numbers from, well, the devs told me that this is the official conversion rate, so this is what I'm sticking with. So, let's begin, shall we? First off, you'll get a fairly reasonable amount of naval cap from just playing the game. There's 10 techs that will increase your cap to about a total of 220 which is pretty decent. You just need to jump through a bunch of hoops to get there, science them, and poof, you have them. Now, with that out of the way, let's throw some of the other naval cap contenders straight under the bus. Starting off with the Strategic Coordination Center, because, well, it costs 45,000 alloys over several upgrades, uh, which take a lot of time, and you only get 150 naval cap out of this. Sure, you'll get a bunch of additional bonuses, but we're focusing mostly on naval cap here. That means that you're paying 300 alloys for every single unit of naval cap that you're getting here, which is a terrible, terrible return of investment if this is the reason why you're building this thing. Sure, you're going to get some other bonuses as well, but it's really not why we are here. Then there is 
arguably the worst source of naval capacity, which is galactic force projection. It's awful. It's beyond terrible. And it's probably the Ascension perk that needs the most rework the quickest. Because let's be honest here, you get 80 naval cap out of this thing. And that's it. You don't get anything else. And you only have eight Ascension perks. And there is way better things that you can spend your Ascension points on. And brother, <laughs> this just ain't it. Uh, then there is Galactic Mobilization, which is a custodian reform solution, which gives you, as well as everybody else, 150 naval cap. But uh, you'll have to become the custodian first to get this enacted, which takes way too much effort. And there is really better ways of acquiring 150 naval capacity. Now, with those ones out of the way, it's time to look at the remaining contenders. Anchorage stations are very very popular 65 percent of you voted that this was your favorite way of generating naval capacity but we'll have to dive a little bit deeper to see if this is actually the case or not first of all you will need six slots to optimize this approach which means that you will need to build a star fortress and this little maneuver is going to cost you 2050 outlays Sure, you can have some bonuses here and there to reduce that, but as a flat number, 2050 is what we're going to keep in mind. After that, you still need all the modules. Six anchorages, one naval logistics office, and this will give you 36 naval power for 2450 alloys. That means that every single point of naval cap will cost you 68 alloys. It's very quick, it's very dirty, but is it the best? Hmm. Let's move on to Fortress Habitats. Now, the math is going to potentially going to get a little bit dicey here. So feel free to mention in the comments below on how wrong I actually am. Anyway, first off, a habitat has an upfront cost of 1500 alloys, as well as a bunch of influence, but we're not going to count that in this particular calculation. Then you need to get an advanced hab and then a advanced habitat world, uh, which you'll need to spend in total 2500 alloys on in order to get to that level. Why? Because you will need to get the building slots and you can only get that if you get habitat world. Also, you probably need to get the habitat ascension perk, but that's like a whole different thing. This means um you'll have spent four thousand alloys with nothing to show for it yet and then there is the cost of the colony ship to get the place running which converts to about 500 alloys and then you need to place the strongholds to fill up the place which means you need to spend 8800 minerals and 550 moats which translates to for another four and a half thousand alloys uh which is a lot and then you'll get your 44 soldier jobs each generating six naval cap uh, i do hope that you got the defense planning technology at the start of the game which means that uh, you are clocking in at a rather nice 34 alloys per naval cap it is quite a reasonable amount because in the end you're still going to get about 260 naval capacity per fortress in this particular case which is quite substantial it's actually twice as efficient as an anchorage starbase but of course there always has to be another and who else would have to have a better return on investment than of course the empire type that is hilariously overpowered it is of course the mega core mega core as i mentioned are overpowered and their merc liaison office is no different for a cost of 500 minerals i.e 250 alloys it will generate you 10 naval cap which translates to 25 alloys per naval cap which is pretty darn crazy and i could just stop here there is actually no cheaper way of getting naval cap in the game or is there uh you could still you know fill a franchise full of these things and at a cost of a thousand alloys get 40 naval cap in return and sure it may not scale very well uh but you'll have to run a megacorp empire in order to do this and in the end it still blows most other sources of naval cap out of the water uh, and it makes galactic force projection looks particularly like a massive joke because you will get the same result from a friggin ascension perk by just having two franchises or is it Let's uh, scoot back to those fortress habitats, shall we? Let's just remove the habitat bit and I use a planet. We can basically bypass all of the upfront costs, place nothing but city districts on the planet, unlocking all the building slots, 
and only put fortresses on there. You don't have to build a habitat or upgrade it. Just find a small planet, terraform it, and then fill it up. We just have to pay the colonization fees as well as the fortresses. And then quickly running the map, that means that we can get one naval cap for only 20 alloys this way, which is quite substantial. That is cheaper than a megacorp, which is completely crazy. So yeah, objectively, the cheapest way of getting naval cap is fortress planets a topic that nobody even ever voted on which i find is hilarious but here's the thing right objectively star fortress anchorages are the best source of naval capacity why because it has a relatively low price of admission habitats and planets still need to generate uh pops in order to get those numbers you need those spare pops to get the soldier jobs and Quite frankly, they are the most important resource in the game, and you should probably be spending them somewhere else. Maybe on alloys, maybe on science. Sure, you could build a few fortress worlds, but where are you going to get the pops to man them? Uh, this is where the big issue lies. The hidden costs and the anchorages simply do not have any of them. If any, they'll have multiple slots to diversify what they can do. And in return of your investment, it's super straightforward. And if you want to make more of them, this claim some more station uh, space and get another station capacity it's 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 kind of crazy that way in the end though fortress planets are by far the cheapest source of naval cap if of course you have the sources of pops to use them and activate the jobs but anchorages they're fine they're, they're just fine just don't get galactic force projection that ascension perk is a joke and it really really needs to be overhauled in the meantime though thank you to star trek fleet command for making this video possible if you want to go and check it out there's a link down in the description below as i have mentioned before and of course make sure you get it through the amazon app store because you know you'll get to uh, save some money if you decide to pull the trigger and of course on other games as well thank you so much for watching and until next time take good care of yourselves and as always each other